Hello, it is Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. Today we'll be solving the Tuesday New York Times crossword puzzle, so it should be another fairly gentle puzzle to follow up yesterday's Monday. Today's video was brought to you by Domo Cute, Skella Chicken, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. And they have donated to my Patreon campaign, and if you'd like to figure out how to join their ranks, the link is in the description field underneath the video, patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can get a wealth of bonus videos, as well as other benefits, such as that one. And um, let's see, before we solve today's puzzle, I will also quickly remind you of the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There you can spend time with other members of the community, other people who view this series and chat about crosswords. There's a thread that goes up every day about the current New York Times crossword, and people share their, their reactions to it, and what they stumbled on, and what they enjoyed or didn't. And uh, you can get an extra channel as well, the Solver Society channel, if you back the Patreon campaign. Anyway, let's move on to yesterday's crossword and discuss some clues there that got some interesting comments from people about some context that I didn't have. For instance, Bryn Mawr College in the United States, I, I said, boy, that looks like that looks like uh, Welsh language, that name, Bryn Mawr. And Kathy Swoop said, indeed, Bryn Mawr has a Welsh derivation. It's named after an estate near uh, Dolgalau in Wales that belonged to Roland Ellis, a Welsh Quaker who emigrated to per Pennsylvania to escape religious persecution. And Caleb Alberton explains that Bryn Mawr means high hill in Welsh, which I should have guessed, actually. Um, but anyway, goes on to say the town was named after an estate in Wales belonging to a Quaker who emigrated to Pennsylvania. So goes on. And uh, Caleb Alberton also explains that Ice Tea is the stage name of Tracy Lauren Marrow, uh, who took the name, according to Wikipedia, as a tribute to Iceberg Slim, a the author of Pimp, a memoir, and Trick Baby, which was adapted into a black exploitation film. Iceberg Slim was called such for his frosty temperament and for staying calm in emergencies. And finally, this was quite a mistake on my part. Byron Torrey observes that I referred to a seahorse's prehensile appendage as being non-functional or unnecessary. Prehensile means capable of grasping, such as a monkey's tail or elephant's trunk. Seahorses use their tails to hold on to grasses, corals, and other substances to keep from being tossed around in currents that would otherwise outpace their ability to swim with tiny fins. What you were describing, evolutionary leftovers, is known as vestigial. So yes, that is absolutely the case. I completely mixed up prehensile and vestigial. Whoops, that was silly. I won't make that mistake again. I think I can be confident of that. Anyway, I think that's all. So let's get right on to Tuesday's puzzle. This is a crossword constructed by Tao Platt and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. There will be some kind of theme. I wonder if it has anything to do with these cross shapes in the grid. Might, might not. Um, and it should be fairly gentle. should be a fairly easy puzzle. We're still early in the week. It's only Tuesday. We don't need anything too taxing on a Tuesday. So let's get started. Okay. A policy nerd. I don't know how widespread this is, but a policy wonk, you hear that often. I think it's possibly, you could use it in other contexts, other fields, but it seems to most often be accompanying policy, uh, political policy. And here we have director Anderson, Wes Anderson, who recently came out with what? The French Dispatch. And a Tolkien monster with an O, probably an orc, I would think, and a secretive organization could be the could be the NSA or the NSC. You see both of them in, in here, the National Security Agency or Council in the United States. But based on the crosses on 17, I assume it will be a National Security Agency. And then we have a Northern European region. Well, with SCA, I would assume that to be Scandinavia. Fits pretty cleanly. Always nice to get a long answer early. All right. A logic puzzle invented by a math teacher as a teaching tool. I think this is Ken Ken, which I've never played, but I've, I've heard of it. It's one of those ones that pops up in newspapers. I don't know exactly what it is. 
And then here we have Gaelic language, Ers, that looks right, I'm probably saying that poorly, um, but I know it in written language anyway. Kind of beef from Japan, Kobe beef, the famous Japanese high quality beef. And to refine as a skill is to hone that skill, which has come up, I think, maybe yesterday, actually. And a baby's bed is a crib, a lawyer's group for short. I think it might be the ABA, the American Bar Association. And P.F. Blank restaurant chain, P.F. Chang's, a, uh, I don't know, sort of lightly upscale Chinese restaurant chain in the U.S., I guess. And actress Campbell, Nev Campbell. Actress Pat, actor Pattinson, sorry, Robert Pattinson. And a job for a play director. Staging, maybe? The play director must determine, the, must figure out, plan the staging of the play, I suppose. And a climber's belaying device. So a climber's going to use this, use this to belay on a rock face. Grip or... What is that? What is this? Like the richest souffle, the richest souffle. Well, the richest lets us know that we're going to be using a superlative adjective here. So it'll be the most of something. So it could end with EST. It's probably the eggiest, the richest and eggiest souffle. <laughs> All right. What about this? Home with a Northern Exposure. Is that an igloo? By Northern expo Home with a Northern Exposure. Does that mean it's built in northern areas or does that is that weirdly referring to a sort of hole in the top using north in a punny way i don't think so i think it would have a um a question mark if so oil drilling structure and oil rig so what is this climber's belaying device what is that i don't think i know i don't think i know this word its flag has a blue 61 across. All right, what's that? Flag symbol seen twice in this puzzle's grid. Oh, interesting. Oh, oh, so maybe it is the cross. Flag symbol seen twice in this puzzle's grid. So what is that called? Um... I'm not sure. Let's just keep solving and see what happens. Female friend in France could be ami, with the e on the end indicating the um, feminine as opposed to masculine version. Gluttony, gluttony and lust for two. They could be sins, the seven deadly sins. And philosopher Emmanuel Kant, K-A-N-T. So does that work here? Yes. To query is to ask somebody something. Actress Pharaoh is Mia Farrow. And a cozy lodging is an inn. So that all works. Uh, outed maliciously online, that is doxed, which comes from, I guess it's a, I guess it's turning doc, the document doc into a verb, doxing, releasing somebody's documents without their consent. And a county of Newark, New Jersey, I think this probably is Essex based on the crosses here, but let's check them. Got married in Vegas, perhaps, um, eloped, and the perhaps lets us know that these things aren't it's not a direct definition or synonym. And it's obviously you can get married in Vegas without eloping. You can plan a marriage in, in Las Vegas and get married there. But uh, it's sort of known. Las Vegas is known as somewhere uh, where people elope. So we're saying, ah, uh, might be that, perhaps. Okay, feeling of dejection. I'm not sure offhand. And then a lyrical dedication, an ode. The official crossword form of the New York Times crossword puzzle is, of course, the ode. And that's awesome. Could be, what, so something? So maybe not. Star Wars racing vehicles. Pods, I guess. Pod racers. I didn't know they were just called pods. That was from the Star Wars episode one, I think. And swords with blunted ends are epées. The um, fencing, used in fencing, I guess. And that's awesome. Oh, so dope, I suppose. Okay, it wouldn't have gotten there without some crosses. Uh, but fortunately, we got the crosses. Oh, its flag has a yellow 61 across, Sweden. And then uh, its flag has a white 61 across, Denmark. So, okay, and the Scandinavia is actually appropriate here because the Scandinavian countries, they do all have, I think all have crosses 
on their flags. They all they, they that is a, that is a, a very common motif on Scandinavian flags. So that's actually sort of part of the. I think it's lightly part of the theme, even though it's not doesn't seem to be connected to the answers in the way that the others are. So what about this penultimate matches the semis the semifinals, and the nest egg. Your savings, your nest egg, your savings, what you'll retire on. And blank been meaning to mention, I've been meaning to mention, and a vacation destination could be a resort. If one was in a state of suppressed agitation, it could be stewed, perhaps. You were stewing, you were suppressing your ire, your frustration, your agitation. Drops on the grass could be dew, dew drops, and novelist Graham Graham Greene, um, the quiet American, and, and so on. Okay, C58 down. With 58 down, car, R, car air freshener shape. A pine tree, I think, is a common shape for a car freshener. Air freshener in a car, sorry. Uh, oh, twee. Hmm. Uh, not correct. That would be tree, not a twee. I was confused when I came across here. And it said, flag symbol seemed twice in this puzzle's grid. And I thought, oh, maybe it's the Nordic cross. But I had Nordic cross. Anyway, Nordic cross. Okay, so I didn't didn't really remember that that's what that was called, Nordic cross. I'm sure I'd read that at some point, but it wasn't, wouldn't have, uh, didn't remember it being called as such. Uh, so got an A on is aced, a test, for instance. And two, queen, two kings or two queens, e.g., could be a pair in poker, for instance, a card game. A set of moral principles could be an ethic, and military helicopters, colloquially. Um, I'm not sure. Not really sure what that is. What about this? Yay. Could be, hmm, could be hooray or hurrah. Probably has an A there either way, but the end could be Y or H. Actor John of Good Omens. Um, could it be, was John Hamm in that? I'm not sure. Uh because that would work with the H. So let's check the crosses. Our in Italy could be Aura, or is Aura, I would think, and a virtual citizen in a popular video game franchise, The Sims, a sim in The Sims, a computer game, and the symbolic U.S. uncle, Uncle Sam, the symbolic uncle of the United, patriotic uncle of the United States, and an opera highlight is an aria, a, uh, a song with that features a particular singer, generally. Okay, so that does look like hurrah. And what about over here? We have the mili military, well, military helicopter. Ah, I'm losing, I'm losing, my, losing track. All right, let's jump back up. So what was this? Feeling of dejection. Oh, lowness, I suppose. More straightforward than I was making it, I guess. Just the state of being low or dejected. A soup starter could be a stock. You would make soup from a stock. And a little bit of time could be a sec. And I think in this case, a second is obviously a small amount of time, but also I think the little bit of time is indicating that we're shortening the word. So it's it's sort of in, in some ways kind of a double, a definition is doing double duty. All right. To scare somebody off is to deter them, which also came up in the puzzle very recently. And a flyer with a tail. Flyer with a tail. Is that a bird or an airplane or what? Fiona or Shrek? Uh, Shrek is an ogre from the film and children's book Shrek. So there we go. And it's an or clue. So it's singular, not plural, even though two examples are listed. It's not ogres. Okay, to play dirty is to go low. So we've got another low there, mirroring our lowness. And a, oh, I see, the popular vote winner of 2000. So that, uh, in the in the 2000 presidential election. Al Gore won the popular vote, but lost the Electoral College. So George W. Bush won the presidency in the United States. And its flag has a blue and white Nordic cross. Norway. This is this is an, a fun little theme. <laughs> I was wondering at the beginning if the two crosses were involved in the theme, and it turns out they absolutely are. So lingers on is dwells on. And what is this? Ah, yet another. Its flag has a blue 61 across, Finland. Although Finland is not, Finland is Nordic, but not Scandinavian. Um, so the Scandinavia is not, uh, I suppose that's why it's not linked to the other answers, um, because it isn't 
it doesn't strictly describe all of these countries, but it is sort of related. Several of these countries are Scandinavian. But they're all Nordic. That's for sure, I think. All right, here we have blank Jacques Dormez-vous, Frère Jacques Dormez-vous. Uh, just a little, the French um, nursery rhyme. So I guess that means, uh, Brother Jack, are you sleeping? Dormez-vous. Flyer with a tail. So what is this? Oh, a comet, perhaps? A, a comet has a tail. So that was a completely different direction than I was thinking. And the second tallest bird on Earth. Must be the emu. They're certainly tall. Didn't know they're the second tallest on Earth. I wonder what the tallest is. An ostrich, perhaps? Radium discoverer. Curie. And 10th anniversary gift must be tin. <clears throat> The anniversary gift <laughs> materials are very funny. You've got paper in there and iron, I think, maybe in some of them. I think iron is in... I learned this weirdly just the other day. I think iron is in the American ones, but not the British ones, and steel is one of them. Anyway. Okay, 2021 Elizabeth Warren book. Is it... Looks like it could be either persist or I insist. Persist seems more plausible. Let's try that. Depend on is to rely on. Sign at a highway cloverleaf. A clover, highway cloverleaf is one of those big complex intersections with the roads sort of um, circling around, the on-ramps and off-ramps circling around one another, and it looks from above like a cloverleaf. Anyway, the sign could be exit, an exit sign. And a chopper is an axe. Oh, that reminds me. I never looked at chopper because chopper is a name of a hell is a uh, slang term for a helicopter. It reminded me I've never looked back at military helicopters colloquially. Hueys. Okay. I'm not quite sure of the derivation of that, but it sort of sounds like I've probably heard that in a, in a film or something. Okay. Uh, here we have rapper Wayne, rapper Lil Wayne, and then here we have friends or pals, and it's a mess is a sty. And there's the crossword. I would say that was all things considered, a nice, gentle solve, exactly as we would expect and for which we would hope on a Tuesday. And a nice theme. We had the flag symbol seen twice in this puzzle's grid. Um, these two crosses, Nordic cross, we now know that that's, that's called. Uh, we had a reference to Scandinavia, which, um, which connects several of the, of the nations in the answer. And then we had... Uh, I guess there isn't a single answer that's going to highlight all of the um, all of the countries, but we had Finland with a blue Nordic cross, Norway with a blue and white Nordic cross. Uh, let's see, Sweden with a yellow Nordic cross. I'm now I'm going to fail to find all of these. Oh boy. Well, maybe I don't need to find them all because otherwise I'll keep you stuck here for an unnecessary amount of time. But anyway, I thought that was a very clever theme. I've not seen that. I've not seen this this idea before, at least not certainly not executed in this particular way. So that was a nice, nice theme construction by Tao Platt. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel, and then you will be able to easily see these videos as they're posted each day, according to your YouTube notification preferences. And if you know somebody who might enjoy this series as well, do pass it along. That's really the only um, only mechanism I have for spreading the word. So the, to the extent you could help, that would be great. And if you'd particularly like to contribute to the ongoing success of this series, the ongoing ability for it to continue, um, check out the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve, where for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get access to the whole wealth, the whole backlog of videos that has been uh, posted on there to date. And again, still happy to hear your requests, suggestions, recommendations for what I could be solving on the Patreon members feed. Happy to, happy to hear that. And if you contribute at a particular level, the benefactor level, you will get that exclusive mug that says, let's check the crosses. I don't have it to hand. I should have. And uh, you will also be thanked at now at the beginning of these videos, as was the case today. And um, I think that's it. I think that's all I have. So that was a pretty, uh, a pretty breezy solve. I would say a breezy solve and a breezy video. Thank you for making it 
all the way to the end. Thank you to everybody who's backed the Patreon campaign. I very much appreciate that. And thank you to you for watching this video. I will be back tomorrow for the midweek Wednesday puzzle, a little bit of a step up in difficulty from the Monday and Tuesday, and I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care.